This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. In this part, we are going to discuss the very important concepts that is accuracy and precision in measurement. So first of all, let me distinguish between accuracy and precision. Accuracy of a measurement is a measure of how close the measured value is to the true value of the quantity. So accuracy of a measurement is a measure of how close the measured value is to the true value of the quantity. It should be comparable with the true value. That is what we call it as accurate. It is very accurate. The result is very accurate. So it is just the comparison. If, uh, if we get uh, if the value of any solution or the problem, if it is like 10.13, you just think. And the value that we got is 10.19 something or else uh, then it, we can say uh, there is a little the answer is not that much accurate isn't it a little difference instead of this if it is like 10.12 then we can compare it to this true value then we can say it's accurate right almost the answer is nearer to the true value. Then what is this precision? Precision tells us to what resolution or limit the quantity is measured. In order to understand the concept of accuracy and precision, I will give you a very simple example. If you just think your digital watch, it shows 10 hours, 11 minutes, and 12 a.m. Okay, this is the time in your digital watch. Is very precise. This time is very precise because it has a least count of one second. It can measure even seconds, isn't it? So that we can say it is very precise. Similarly, if you consider uh, another watch of your grandfather, then you just see think that it shows a time of 10. 30 a.m. Here the least count of this watch is minute that is one minute. So compared to your digital watch this watch is less what we can say less precise isn't it? Here it can measure even seconds but here it measures in terms of minutes okay that the precision is not there compared to this second one isn't it? Yes. So this is a concept of precision. If we want to think about this accuracy, then you just think even though it's precision, it shows seconds. Now if I say the time that is shown by your watch is not matching to the practical time. Say for example, your watch is showing like 10, 11, 12, but the actual time is now 11. Do you think the result given by, you know, whatever the result that is uh, given by your digital watch is accurate? No, right? It is very much, uh, uh, what we can say, inaccurate when we compare it to this true value. If we consider your grandfather watch, uh, if, uh, if it shows around uh, 11 only, 11 p.m. exactly, then we can say this watch is more accurate. So compared to your watch, this your grandfather watch is more accurate because it is uh, the value that is uh, showing, uh, the value that is shown by your grandfather watch is comparable with the real time, isn't it? This is what the concept of accuracy and precision is. Physical quantity should be measured with the high accuracy and high precision. And in the measurement of any physical quantity, we should consider many things, okay? Many things plays a very important role in measurement of uh, 
physical quantity with accuracy. The first thing is skill of the person who is doing the experiment, quality of the instrument used, the method used for measurement and even the external and internal factors affecting the result of the experiments. So all these things are very much important in measuring a physical quantity. Now let us study the errors in measurement. When different physical quantities are measured in a laboratory with the help of different apparatus, there would be some inaccuracies in the measurement which must be mentioned along with the result. Of course, whatever we measure, at least a little percentage of error will be there in that. So, 100% accuracy is not possible, isn't it? The inaccuracy in measurement is called as error. Okay, what is this error then? It is nothing but the inaccuracy in measurement. The inaccuracy in measurement is called as the error. So there are different types of errors. As we can see here, the first one is constant errors, systematic errors and random error. What is this constant error? An error is said to be constant error if it affects every time a measurement in a similar manner. For example, you just consider we are measuring a 10 meter of length and every time instead of getting 10 meter, we will get 9 meter. So whatever may be the number of time, times that we measure this 10 meter, every time the error introduced will be 1 meter only it means it is constant throughout the experiment. So those kind of errors are called as constant errors. The second type of errors are called as systematic errors. Okay, Errors which come into existence by virtue of a definite rule are called as systematic errors. Which means systematic errors are those errors that tend to be in one direction either positive or negative. Such errors cannot be both positive and negative simultaneously. Okay. Again in the systematic errors we have different types. Let's see those types in the next slide. And the third type of error is called as random error. So, the random errors or the accidental errors. Errors which takes place in a random manner and it cannot be associated with a systematic cause are called as random or accidental errors. Okay, which means these errors are the errors which arise due to irregular and unpredictable fluctuations in the factors affecting the measurement during experiment. And these random errors, they can be both positive and negative. So, such errors can be estimated by taking many observations and then taking their mean or average. Okay. So, systematic errors are only in one direction but random errors can be in both directions, either positive or negative. Okay. And we have the another type of error that is called as absolute error. The magnitude of the difference between an individual measurement and the true value of the quantity is called as absolute error. Okay, here we are comparing the value of measurement with the true value. In this case, absolute error and the result what we get is called as absolute error. Okay. So, I already told you in the systematic error, again we have 
different types. The first one is instrumental error. So what is this instrumental error? Let us see in the next slide. And the second one is error due to imperfection in experimental technique. And the third one is personal error. Okay. So the first one is instrumental error. This type of errors arise due to imperfect design or improper calibration of the measurement or measuring instrument. So we'll get this instrumental error only if there is an imperfect design. Okay. Or imperfect calibration of the measuring instrument. For example, when no object is suspended from a spring balance, its pointer shows 0.1 gram, isn't it? Even though no object is suspended, still it shows 0.1 gram instead of zero. Then all the measurements of more than two weight will systematically contain this error during experiment. So whatever you measure, this point one will be added to that and this is a systematical error which means it is constant for all the weights that we measure. So these are called as instrumental errors. And the second type of systematic error is error due to imperfection in experimental technique. For example, we can consider one example to understand this technique. While measuring the temperature of human body, any improper contact of thermometer with the body would produce an error in the measurement, isn't it? So external factors like temperature, pressure, humidity can produce systematic error in measurement. So it is just a wrong contact, okay? The error which is due to a wrong contact or due to some technical problems, okay? It can be like holding the thermometer. If you are not holding the thermometer in a proper way, it may give us a wrong result, isn't it? So these kinds of errors are called as error due to imperfection in experimental technique. So the third kind of error are, okay, they are called as personal error. What is this error? So such an error arises due to an individual's basis, carelessness in taking observations or improper setting of the apparatus of the experiment. So this personal error, you no, know, it's fully depends on the skill of the person who is doing the experiment or who is doing this measurement. So if he is very careless and if he is not taking the proper the observations, for example, uh, in measuring the length in uh, using meter scale or Gornier caliper. So if, if the actual reading is 0.1 meter say and if he has taken instead of 0.1 if we take 0.01. So the error what uh, uh, the error due to his carelessness will be very large, isn't it? What is the difference between 0.1 and 0.01 is very much, isn't it? So this personal error, it completely depends on the skill of a person. So how accurately he'll measure the things, okay? And even in setting the apparatus improper, setting of the apparatus okay if the apparatus in for any measurement if they are not properly set then again we can get the errors in measuring that particular quantity systematic errors can be minimized by improving experimental techniques 
selecting high quality instruments and removing personal bias isn't it if these three are the systematic errors so we can improve them by using a very good experimental techniques and even by selecting a very good quality of instruments and even by reducing this personal error so this completely depends on individual isn't it so by controlling all these three parameters we can uh, what reduce the systematic error in a system